Ever since I was little, I liked sports. I needed to be active. I always had a lot of energy. Just nothing doing. Raekwon Williams, 99. I would just be throwing the ball in the parking lot. And one day, Tim Hall was driving past. I think I was riding down the street one day and I saw him. I'm like, man, kid, you should be playing football. He was like, uh, you want to play some real ball? I was like, man, I love to play some real ball. And he told me to come to practice one day. His mom was a little hesitant at first, you know what I'm saying? I used to see him. He used to be, he used to be like, my, some big old boys on that team. I said, boy, them big boys can fall down. He wasn't that talented. Couldn't put his hand down in three-point stand. But he always tried, though. He came to practice every day, and he never gave up. I'm from the west side of Chicago. East Garfield Park area. When you grow up in an area like that, you see a lot of different people and experience a lot of different things, from little league coaches to uh, game bangers on the corner. The biggest thing Chicago taught me about living life or growing up is you got to take advantage of everything you get because it can be gone. I have four boys. Raised the oldest, then Corey, then Corley, then Jaquan. We never really had a house, a place to call home. I'll be with my grandma and my cousins all the time, living house to house. We got some stability when we stayed there with my mom, cousin, her kids, and my mom's kids were all in there. So it was about eight of us in one room, you know, it was crazy. But that was the first time I felt like I had a home, so I was like happy about it. In third grade, I met Mackenzie Hyde. She was just one of those teachers that everybody in the classroom knew she cared about us. I just saw that he had tremendous potential. I knew that he had, between his mom, his aunts, his uncles, cousins and whatnot, there was a huge support network there, but there are other things that unfortunately were not available to him. And so just trying to make sure that he had and he recognized that he had opportunities outside of the confines of the neighborhood. On the weekend, she would take us to like different areas of, of Chicago that I didn't even know existed at the time. That's when their relationship started to grow. She's legit. She's real as they come, I say. I only taught for those two years, so after that second year of teaching, I went to law school here at Loyola. I stayed in touch with him. We'd see each other a couple times a year. He was not just good at sports. He did have good grades. He was also valedictorian of his eighth grade class. When he was in eighth grade, I went to see one of his football games. I talked to the coaches, and they said, yeah, he's a talented football player, and he should be looking into the Catholic schools. Um, for high school. So I talked to his mom and I said, do you mind if I take him to do the Catholic school testing? She said, sure, and Raekwon was totally excited about doing that. That summer, he and a couple other friends from Garfield Park would take the bus up and do this basketball program at Gordon Tech, which is now DePaul Prep. And the basketball coach just adored him. And so I was able to work out with high school a partial scholarship and I would pay the, the remainder for Raekwon to attend the school. I said, look, I can't be successful for you. So while I can write a check for the tuition, you're the one that has to do the work to stay in school. So if you're doing your part, I'll do my part. That changed my life. DePaul Prep, it was a little distance from uh, East Garfield Park. He was coming from the west side, going all the way up north. That's too far for him to come. He, then he had to be at school at seven. And I remember times where I was like super late to class and teachers were like, I'm in detention now. So his mom and I talked and obviously talked to Raekwon and said, you know, it'd be a lot easier if he stayed, if he stayed at my house a few days a week to just get his academics in order. That made the commute to get to school so much easier. You know how the guys were like tell So I'm staying there a couple of nights and then a couple of nights turned to a couple of weeks. Now I'm like staying months at a time. And then after a while you just realize like, dang, I live here now. That meant everything for my mom to even allow me to 
um, go over to McKenzie's because it was going to better my life. I was very cool with it because it's my son, and that's what he wanted, so it was okay. Ron Burton, our defensive line coach, was recruiting in the Chicago area. He laid his eyes on Raekwon Williams. And then when I went and watched him play basketball and I had a chance to, to meet him in person, uh, you knew that he could be something special. On our visit, the one thing that he can never live down is Ray being the talented basketball player that he was. Did lose to Coach D'Antonio and Horst that day. Coach was pretty hot though, so he, he always reminds him. His mom and I took him up for that first day. It's definitely bittersweet as it is for anyone leaving their kid at college for the first time. Probably an hour after we left, he's made, you know, some of his best runs for life. I was always hanging with Ray, and then Ray was always hanging with me, so we always, like, bonded together. I used to always hear him call his brothers and cousins up and just talk to them and laugh and crack jokes with one another. Corey and Corley adored Raekwon and he was always so tremendously attentive to them. His cousin, Antonio, would always say, I'm watching your brothers and sisters. You know, we're all proud of you and I'll help hold down the fort, so to speak. Antonio, that's like my uh, twin, for real. We were the same age, but I felt like he was just so advanced and everything. Everything I learned was from him. That bond that we had is like, there's so many different stories I could tell about that guy. That's that's my that's my blood brother in my eyes. That's my that's my ace. I love him to death. But my freshman year up here, he got murdered the day before his, his birthday. He didn't even get to see me play yet. It was tough and was, that one burned a lot because that's if, if I never had a dad, that was my, you know, that was my dad in a way. Like I told him, just keep striving, it'll be okay. And then 2017 came. Two killed teenagers, just 15 and 16 years old. Residents report hearing about 30 gunshots just after 9 o'clock this morning. One man in a mask opened fire with what some believe was an AK-47. My little brother, Corey Hill, ended up getting murdered uh, uh, morning before on his way to school, too. So, it's like my family's been through a lot. I can't do <laughs> My little brother, he was always, like, looking up to me as, like, a superhero. Whenever I was around talking to him, he'd just try to do everything I do. When he got older, you can tell he experienced something that made him want to want to be a little more rugged. I felt like without having me at home telling people the right thing to do, we were going to keep taking losses at a point. So I'm like, man, I got to get back home before I lose another brother. This is why I work for it. This is why I work hard. This is why I do everything. And if I don't have anybody, what was the purpose of doing all of it? Just ready to come back. I say, we can't come back. You gotta do what you gotta do. You can't. You can't just stop playing football for stuff like that. My mom was telling me that they gonna keep fighting. My teammates telling me keep fighting. I ain't got no choice but to fight, you know, and, and come back to East Lansing and work. Say my bad. You got, a problem. you got a problem with me? No. What's up, man? Just, just give me a little love. That's all I need. I am. Oh, you've been hard on me all day. Growing up, it was us all boys, so it was always tough, rugged. So when my mom started having girls, Desire and Amaya, it was great. I love those two girls. I love them to death. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three
What'd you say? Well, I'm here on that team or that team? Yeah, that he's, team? A, he's on the black team. He's number 41. Yeah, he's the tall one right there. Oh, there he go. Hey, brother. Desire. She stick by my hip all day. She just wants to be around me because I wasn't there as much because of college and high school. So whenever I'm home, she just asks a million questions. <laughs> Let's see it, y'all. I love Jaquan. He's on top of everything to be 13. Ray, pop that man. He think he's a real football player like you. Ain't you Michigan State, boy. There you go. Corleek was like a twin of Corey. I could tell he misses his brother. Some of the stuff his brother did, he wants to do. I'm gonna hear about that one. It was a good one. Good play, good play. Gangs are very like big on his radar. He think that's a, that's a cool way of like going about life. So when I come home and he sees me like uh, going to practices with uh, little league teams and like showing them drills and everything, he didn't think that was cool to do until he seen me do it. You look like you were trying to make a play. That's serious. See, see the difference? Yeah, I like that. I can kind of sense that I am affecting him because now he's back playing sports and he's back wanting to listen and uh, do everything my mom says. A good tackle right there. Oh man. <laughs> the straight line is always the best line. You can't want to be a gangbanger and then expect that life is going to be smooth and silk. It's not like that. It's not. Can't you see that we took a lot of losses in this life? I hope that's getting through his head. That's not the way to go. What a weight! What a weight room at? I'm still I'm way stronger than you think. You way stronger than you think. I seen him hand me up. I don't really, I don't know. You just gotta get in the weight room. Oh, no, let's do, let's get a picture actually while you got a little equipment on. Raekwon can be really hard on himself because he tries to carry kind of the world on his shoulders a little bit, and I always try to remind him you've got to, you have to start with you. You have to take care of yourself and then you do as much as you can for people. This little slogan on his Instagram, be great Ray, it's been his thing since high school. You just gotta be great. Yeah, Ray. Ray's a good man. He's gonna have a degree, something to fall back on. And Ray gonna, I don't know if he's gonna get married or nothing like that, but he gonna be okay. He gonna be okay. He'll be all right. Go green! 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 Go green!